book the second, installment four. I'll begin at around line 629. Meanwhile, the adversary of God and man, Satan, with thoughts inflamed of highest design, puts on swift wings and toward the gates of hell explores his solitary flight. Sometimes he scours the right-hand coast, sometimes the left, now shaves with a level wing the deep, then soars up to the fiery concave towering high, as when far off at sea a fleet described hangs in the clouds by equinoctial winds close sailing from Bengala, or the isles of Trinati, or to Dore, whence merchants bring their spicy drugs, they on the trading flood through the wide Ethiopian to the Cape ply stemming nightly toward the pole. So seemed far off the flying fiend. At last appear hell bounds, reaching, high reaching to the horrid roof, and thrice threefold the gates. Three folds were brass, three iron, three of adamantine rock, impenetrable, impaled with circling fire yet unconsumed. Before the gates there sat on either side a formidable shape. The one seemed woman to the waist and fair, but ended foul in many a scaly fold voluminous and vast, a serpent armed with mortal sting. About her middle round a cry of hellhounds, never ceasing barked with wide Serbian mouths, full loud and rung a hideous peal. Yet when they list, would creep if aught disturbed their noise, into her womb, and kennel there. Yet there still barked and howled within unseen. Far less aboard than these vexed Scylla bathing in the sea that parts Calabria from the horse Trina Trinacrian, I think, something like that, Trinacrian, sure. Nor uglier follow the night hag, that would be Lilith, by the way, when called in secret, riding through the air, she comes, lured with the smell of infant blood, to dance with Lapland witches, while the laboring moon eclipses at their charms. So there again is that moon association with Satan. And all things female, because this is Sin, who is also female. The other shape, if shape it might be called, that shape had none distinguishable in member, joint, or limb, or substance might be called, that shadow seemed, for each seemed either black it stood as night, fierce as ten furies, terrible as hell, and shook a dreadful dart. What seemed his head, the, like, the likeness of a kingly crown had on. Satan was now at hand, and from his seat the monster moving onward came as fast with horrid strides. Hell trembled as he strode. The undaunted fiend, what this might be, admired, admired, not feared. God and his son except, created thing not valued he, nor shunned, and with disdainful look thus first began. Whence and what art thou? execrable shape that darest so grim and terrible advance thy miscreated front athwart my way to yonder gates through them i mean to pass that be assured without leave asked of thee retire or taste thy folly and learn by proof hell-born not to contend with spirits of heaven to whom the goblin full of wrath replied art thou that traitor angel art thou he who first broke peace in heaven and earth and faith till then unbroken and in proud rebellious arms drew after him the third part of heaven's sons conjured against the highest for which both thou and they outcast from god are here condemned to waste eternal days in woe and pain and reckonst thou thyself with spirits of heaven, hell doomed, and breathest defiance here, and scorn where I reign king, 
and to enrage thee more, thy king and lord, back to thy punishment, false fugitive, and to thy speed at wings, lest with a whip of scorpions I pursue thy lingering, or with one stroke of this dart, strange horror seize thee, and pangs unfelt before. So spake the grisly terror, and in shape, so speaking and so threatening, grew tenfold more dreadful and deform. On the other side, incensed with indignation, Satan stood, unterrified, and like a comet burned that fires the length of Orphanilla, huge in the arctic sky, and from his horrid hair shakes pestilence and war. Each at the head leveled his deadly aim, their fatal hands no second stroke intended. At such a frown each cast at the other, as when two black clouds with heaven's artillery fraught come rattling on over the Caspian, then stand front to front, covering a space till winds the signal blow to join their dark encounter in mid-air. So frowned the mighty combatants that hell grew darker at their frown. So matched they stood, for never but once more was either like to meet so great a foe. And now great deeds had been achieved whereof all hell had rung, had not the snaky sorceress that sat fast by hell gate and kept the fatal key risen and with hideous outcry rushed between. O oh, father, what intends thy hand, she cried, against thy only son? What fury, O oh, son, possesses thee to bend that mortal dart against thy father's head? And knowest from whom? From him who sits above and laughs the while at thee ordained his drudge to execute whate'er his wrath which he calls justice, bids his wrath which one day will destroy ye both. She spake, and at her words the hellish pest forbore. Then these to her Satan returned. So strange thy outcry, and thy words so strange, thou interposits that my sudden hand prevented, spares to tell thee yet by deeds what it intends, till first I know of thee, what thing thou art thus double formed, and why, in this infernal veil, first met, thou callest me father, and, and that phantasm callest my son? I know thee not, nor ever till now, sight more detestable than him and thee. To whom the portress of hell gate replied, Hast thou forgotten me then? And do I seem now in thine eyes so foul, once deemed so fair in heaven, when at the assembly and in sight of all the seraphim with thee combined in bold conspiracy against heaven's king? All on a sudden miserable pain surprised to thee, dim thine eyes and dizzy swum in darkness while thy head flames thick and fast through forth till on the left side opening wide, likest to thee in shape and countenance bright, then shining heavenly fair, a goddess armed out of thy head I sprung. Amazement seized all the host of heaven, back they recoiled afraid, and first and called me sin, and for a sign portentous held me. But familiar grown I pleased, and with attractive graces won the most averse, thee chiefly, who full of thyself in me, thy perfect image viewing, becamest enamoured. In such joy thou tookest with me in secret, that my womb conceived a growing burden. Meanwhile, war arose, and fields were fought in heaven, wherein remained, for what could else, to our almighty foe clear victory, to our part, loss and rout, through all the Empyrean, down they fell, driven headlong from the pitch of heaven, down into this deep, and in the general fall, I also, at which time this powerful key into my hand was given with charge to keep these gates for ever shut, which none can pass without my opening. Pensive here I sat alone, but long I sat not, 
till my womb, pregnant by thee, and now excessive grown, prodigious motion felt and rueful throes. At last this odious offspring whom thou seest, thine own begotten, breaking violent way, tore through my entrails, that with fear and pain distorted all my nether shape, thus grew transformed. But he, my inbred enemy, forth issued, brandishing his fatal dart, made to destroy. I fled and cried out, Death! Hell trembled at the hideous name, and sighed from all her caves, and back resounded, Death! I fled, but he pursued, though more, it seemed, inflamed with lust than rage. And swift a farm he overtook, his mother, all dismayed, and in embraces forcible and foul, engendering with me, of that rape begot these yelling monsters that with ceaseless cry surround me, as thou sawest, hourly conceived and hourly born, with sorrow infinite to me. For when they list, into the womb that bred them they return, and howl and gnaw my bowels their repast. Then, bursting forth afresh with conscious terrors, vex me round that rest or intermission none I find. Before mine eyes in opposition sits grim death, my son and foe, who sets them on, and me his parent would full soon devour for want of other prey, but that he knows his end with mine involved, and knows that I would prove a bitter morsel, and his bane, whene'er that shall be. So fate pronounced, to thou, O father, I forewarn thee, shun his deadly arrow, Neither vainly hope to be invulnerable in those bright arms, though tempered heavenly. For that mortal dint, save he who reigns above, none can resist. <laughs>